I have to say I love chimps for their non-human characteristics, actually, but uh, they do have a lot of human characteristics. Uh, some of them, especially the more intelligent ones, can be very wily and can trick you into a situation. They will think several minutes in advance as to how they can get you into a bad situation to do something not very nice to you, like spit on you or something like that. Um, they're also capable of genuine love. But of course they are wild animals and in a fraction of a second they can be very dangerous, extremely dangerous. Dr. Jan Morjankowski is the director of this laboratory and a top research professor at New York University of Medicine. There, chimpanzees are studied in order to find cures for human illnesses, and currently they are at the vanguard of AIDS research. Dr. Morankowski knows firsthand the remarkable degree of biological similarity between man and ape. It is in general bandied around in the popular literature that there is only 98%, that 98% of the genetic material of chimpanzee and man is the same. Well, it depends how you look at it and how important the 2% are, and I believe they are quite important. <clears throat> but for the better understanding, I can tell you that you had completely exchanged the blood of chimpanzee with human blood, and the chimpanzee would live and normally function with human blood for about five and a half days to six days. We have demonstrated that the chimpanzee organ can maintain a human patient. That shows you how close the similarity is. So given these similarities, if scientists engineered this ape man, what would be the result of this new hybrid creation? Let's say that we are successful. We would develop a, a monster. We wouldn't develop a, just as you see a chimpanzee and man and you imagine how they would fit together. It wouldn't like uh, because of the interference with the development, the animal probably would have a lot of malformations. The fact is, if you want to cross uh, a human with a chimpanzee now and create a hybrid, there's no law in the books that stops you from doing that. So I think that we have to catch up with the potential of this technology very quick. We better start introducing legislation that outlaws and forbids any scientist or any individual from creating these kind of hybrids and transgenic animals, and we better do it quickly. Who should we entrust with the ultimate authority of deciding what kind of transgenic animals ought to be placed on this planet? What kind of new combinations of uh, animal and plant parts or human and animal parts ought to be assembled? Should we entrust the scientific community to decide the future of evolution? Uh, should we entrust the federal government to decide what are the good and bad genes? Or for that matter, should we entrust the corporations or even the consumers? I've been asking this question for nearly 20 years and most Americans are very uh, leery of giving this responsibility to any institution because somehow deep down we understand that the responsibility for the blueprint of evolution should not be handed over to any institution. This is something that we should not entrust to any individual because no one is clairvoyant enough, wise enough, intelligent enough, trustworthy enough to dictate the future of biology on this planet. If these experiments are successful, what then? what would be the purpose of creating an ape-man hybrid? One likely and chilling answer is slavery. One of the uh, most striking differences, I think, between a, hum a chimpanzee and a human being is the hand. You see the way I can bring my thumb up like that to bring it to the tip? They can't do that. So that allows me to do all sorts of precision things that a chimpanzee can't do. The way a chimpanzee gets over it is to use two thumbs and, and work like that. And I believe that that probably stopped them from being made into a form of slaves, because chimpanzees definitely have the intelligence to be slaves. They can be taught to do incredible things, uh, at least up to a certain age. And I think because they, they can't do that, but can only do that, save them. There are thousands of human genes that have been located by scientists that they are now claiming patents over. Scientists are claiming patents over human cell lines, over human genes, and pretty soon they're going to be claiming patents probably on whole organs. And the U.S. Patent Office has said you can now patent any genetically engineered organism you create except the human being because the Constitution forbids slavery. So we're reaching an area here where corporations are beginning to genetically engineer 
all sorts of living combinations and reducing them to inventions that can be patented by the United States government. Just how much of this animal-human crossbreeding is actually taking place is not fully known. But the fact is, genetic engineering is moving ahead at a furious pace. And when the wheels of science are set in motion, there is no turning back. What we have here is a technology, recombinant DNA, genetic engineering, that allows scientists to use engineering technology to create novel new uh, organisms that have never existed in nature. They can simply take the DNA packages, if you will, treat them as cassettes, and begin to rearrange these component parts to create new hybrids that we have not seen in uh, millions of years of evolution. Ape management is in the hands of the apes. Many officials are either dead or held hostage. And the main band of rioting apes are at this very moment marching on the city. It's been established that the ape mob is under the command of a supernormally intelligent chimpanzee who has acquired the power of speech. The rewards from genetic research are limitless.